Hello everyone, my name is Hellsgood and today we're gonna create a cannon that shoots bullets. Well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a cannon that can shoot using a kinematic body 2D and adding physics to it. We are later on in probably not this video but in a future video we're gonna implement enemies that you can shoot, that take damage, that have their own health bar, that you can visually see a red bar that changes using a shader. And lastly, we are going to preview in our editor the path of our bullet using tool script. So let's take a look at the end result here. We will have a cannon that shoots and the angle and direction of where we will shoot is visible using a tool script which is represented by the lines right here. So if I were to select our cannon here and change our angle to uh, let's say mm, 280. That's almost directly up here and down. Now our dummies will have its own health bar. It will have its own animation when you hit him. And if I were to hit play now, let's hit space to shoot and you can actually see the exact path that ball will hit. And as you can see we have some physics involved here. So if you hit the enemy it will take damage. Which is kind of cool. Let's add some more here. Take a look. There's also a added delay. So even if I were to tap rapidly, it won't fire until a certain time has passed. So if you want a rapid fire, you could do that as well. Now, in this example, you can see we don't have any collision. And that's may be what you want or may not be what you want. But I will teach you how you can set up your own collision layer and masks as well. So the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to create a new project. So let me move this to the side here. So I'm not create a completely new project. If you wish to follow along, I can provide you with the assets in the description, which includes a cannon, a ball, dummy, a health bar, overlay, the background of the health bar, and a tile sheet, which we'll use to create some ground, so we can actually have some physics where we land with our ball. I will also include in each and every of my video the project files we were using at the moment of whence I start the video. So if you wish to follow along or skip ahead, you can just download the project files I'll be using in that particular video to follow along. So in the first video, we're going to create our cannon and shooting balls. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a control node. I'm going to rename this main and this will be our main scene. I'm going to press control S to save or simply go into scene, select save scene and hit save button. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit play in order to select our main scene. Hit select right here. And double click main scene and now it is selected. So let's create a new scene here. We're going to use this new scene to instance it into our main scene. Let us start by creating a kinematic body 2D. This will be our body to our cannon, which I will rename to cannon. I'm going to press Control S to save again. I'm going to create a new folder. I'll call this entities. And the entities folder will contain the player, enemies, or uh, well, anything really. So let's call this folder cannon. So now we are inside the resources entities cannon and we'll save cannon tscn. And the reason we're selecting tscn and not scn xml or xscn is because tscn is a text file and readable if you were to use this on github or any other repositories where you make changes. So you can actually see the changes being done inside your scene file. If you were to select scn you could not see the changes. Click and save. Let's start by creating our sprite so we can actually see our cannon. Let's select sprite. Let's rename this to sprite with lower capital letters. Let's go into texture here. Let's select load. Into this cannon. And here we have nothing because I have to include our assets. So I'm gonna copy our cannon. I'm going I'm going to go into our project folder here. Into this cannon. I'm gonna right click here, create a new folder, and name this assets. Yeah. So the assets, I'm just gonna paste our image here. So now we have our cannon texture inside our project folder here. And now it pops up into our view here. So let's select assets and cannon. And now we have a huge cannon here. Let me go into texture here and turn off our filter. Go into edit, flags, turn off filter. What filter does, it makes everything unclear and blurry. You can see here, now it's on, now it's off. I want to be as close as original as possible. Let's not keep any blurry blurriness in our game here. So we have our sprite now. What we need now is a collision box. So I'm going to write in collision. I'm going to select collision polygon and not shape because our shape will be a bit unique as you can see. We have no predefined shape that fits our sprite here. 
So after selecting our collision polymer 2D, I'm going to select our pen here. I'm going to start drawing. Click, 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 and so on. Just do this all the way around. You don't need to be that precise, especially underneath, because you probably won't hit anything underneath with enemies or... Yeah. There you go. That's good enough. So now we have a rough shape of our cannon here. I'm going to rename this to Collision. There you go. Pressing Control S to save, and that is something I will be doing often. So if you notice that it's kind of this happens in the window here, it's because I press Control S, and that is almost it's almost done unconsciously. Um, no, not unconsciously. Um, subconsciously. Yes. <laughs> so lastly, we will need a little node that will tell us where we want our ball to spawn, our bullet. So I'm gonna hit the plus button. I'm gonna find a position 2D. Double click. Rename this bullet spawn. And this position 2D is just a little cross here, as you can see right there. I'm gonna move this in front of this, so it'll be right there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, we are now done with our scene nodes. What we now need to do is to click... What we now need to do is to create our script. So, I'm gonna right-click Canon, select Add Script, and just hit Create. Now, it will be the default path, which is under Canon here, which is perfect. So, Create. Let me zoom in so you can see more. There we go. Let me remove all the commenting. Uh, let's start by getting the basics here. What do we want our cannon to do? Well, we want it to shoot, right? So let's start by creating our shoot function here. It's gonna be shoot. And this, what this will do is it will in create a new instance of a bullet. Using a bullet scene, which we will instance. So let me start by creating this, which we will need. This will be our bullet scene. I'm gonna create an export. And we will expect a packed scene type var named bullet scene. What this does, what the export does, it allows you to select variables and change them from the editor. As you can see, packed scenes allow you to select a scene directly by loading it. So if you have a scene, you can just select it. But let's create our scene. Let's create our bullet scene. Let's go into scene here. New scene. Hit the plus sign and let's create another kinematic body 2D. Now the reason I'm picking Kinematic Body 2D on everything is because it gives me full control of the physics. There is no unexpected movements or weird friction that happens in the air for no reason that you don't know about, which has happened to me, which is the reason I'm choosing Kinematic. Because I want control over my code. So let's name this Canon underscore ball. I'm gonna press Control S to save. I'm gonna create a new folder inside Canon because it will only be the Canon that's gonna shoot this type of bullet. So it makes sense to put it inside the Canon folder. So let's create a folder here. Let's name this Canon Ball. And inside Canon Ball, we are saving our Canon Ball TSCN. So, what do we need? Well, we need an image. We need a sprite. So I'm gonna click our Canon Ball, plus sign, and add a sprite. That's fine right there. Hopefully, I'm not going too fast forward or too slow for that matter. Let me know in the comments if there are any future suggestions of how I may improve my videos. So let's select our sprite here. Let's make sure we drag our cannonball from our assets folder, which is included in this first video. Let's make sure we have a cannonball assets folder. Get a new folder inside cannonball, name it assets, and just paste it in there. Now I try to keep some consistency, at least some level of consistency in my code, like keeping all lower capital letters and underscore between word. words. Now the same with our folder here. As you as you may have noticed, there is some structure in the way we create our folders. We have our base folder, our main resource folder, which contains our first and main scene, which will first load. So it makes sense from a observer point of view that this is the first scene that's gonna load. And it is. And it will be. Now this first scene contains instances of our canon here, which we're gonna create. Or rather, which we have created, but it's not complete yet. It's gonna instance this scene, which in turn will instance a cannonball whenever we shoot. So there is logic in the way we are structuring our folders. So I do, I do suggest if you aren't really familiar with the programming or rather mm, project structure, project folder structure. I'm not sure what to call it. I, I recommend you keep the same structure at least while following the tour tutorials here. <laughs> yeah, one thing I noticed about Godot, there is a lot of bugs in the file system here. So this looks all chaotic, and this is completely inaccurate. A way to fix this is by uh, double clicking. I think. Yeah, there we go. I hope they will fix that in the future, and I'm sure they will. I'm definitely sure they will. But just ignore that for now, it's a bit weird. Anyway, let's go back to our task at hand there. Let's select our sprite. Let's load our cannonball texture, which hopefully I moved. I did. <laughs> Good. There we go. Now it's blurry, so I'm gonna go into the texture again. I'm gonna select edit, I'm gonna uncheck filter. Perfect. 
Yeah, it's not the best uh, art, but uh, it's not for our purposes. <laughs> so, we have a sprite now. We have a cannonball, but it doesn't have any body yet. It doesn't have any collision. So, let us select plus and let's find a collision shape. And the reason we're using collision shape is because it has a circular shape embedded in here. So, I'm gonna load circle shape and just drag it to fit it. Done. Let's rename this collision. So now we're done with our cannonball scene, at least for now. Let's go back into our cannon here. Let's select cannon and let's load our bullet scene. Load. Let's find our cannonball scene. There it is. Perfect. So let's go back into our cannon script here. So now we have our bullet scene. It's now loaded in. So when we shoot, we are instancing our bullet scene, creating a bullet. And the, what we're gonna do with the bullet is we're gonna set the position. Bullet set underscore global position. The reason you're using global is because you are inside. You're in, you're in a node inside a node. So if I were to create our instance of a cannon here, I can do that. Let's select our main scene. Select the little chain symbol here. Let's find our cannon and select that. Let's go back into the view so you can see it. Let's move it along. If I were to move this now, the position inside the body of this node. Everything down here is zero zero position. Well, except the bullet spawn. But like, the collision has a position of 0, 0, so if I were to use just get the position, I would get 0, 0 or something like that. But, you want the position in global space, so I'm gonna use global. Just something to keep in mind. So, let's get a bullet, set global position, and the position of the bullet will be the position of our bullet spawn. So we're gonna have to get the reference to that as well. So let's just first start by getting a bullet spawn. Get global underscore position here. So now, when we create this, let me get this reference. Let's create a bullet spawn export. We're gonna get a node path, which is another type of export. It allows you to select the nodes inside there, or rather a node inside, which returns the path of that selected node from the editor, which is so nice. So let's name it bullet spawn path. And the way we're gonna use this is we're gonna create underneath there an onready variable. Whoops, onready. A variable called bullet spawn, and that will be equal to a get underscore node. And inside get node, we're gonna insert our bullet spawn path, like so. So whenever you start this, it's already been referenced. <laughs> so let's select our cannon here. Let's go all the way up and select our bullet spawn path, which is done by assigning it. Select bullet spawn. Done. Let's go back into script here, and now this is done. So now we can get our global position of our bullet spawn and set it to our bullet position. So, what else do we need? Well, in order for the bullet to be anywhere in our scene, we'll need to add it to our scene tree. Now, I could just use add child and select, and rather, add our bullet inside there, but that's not what we want. Because if we were to do that, and we had a moving player, after shooting, and imagine it going horizontally to the right here. If I were to move while it's shooting, oh, that's the wrong note, but just imagine this being the entire can. If I were to move this, the path of the bullet will also move along with it, so if I move, move down, the bullet will move down with it. And you don't want that, you want it to be independent. So in our case, I can simply just get parent and add it to our main. So let's go inside our script again. Just use get underscore parent and add it there. So we won't add it on the cannon, we'll, we'll add it on the parent to the cannon. Which is our main. So, what else do we need to do? Well, after shooting, we'll need to rather we will need to add some variables into a bullet. Now the way I'm going to do this is a bit, maybe a bit different. Usually you could create a bullet and that bullet will contain all the data like uh, speed and uh, gravity and so on. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a tool script at the end and for that to work, at least for the way I made it work, <laughs> we are going to create those variables in here. However, the bullet itself will contain the damage. So before that, let's create a bullet. And our bullet will have its own script, which we will name a function called shoot. And that shoot function will take in a directional force and a gravity. So bullet gravity. And these variables are something we're gonna create right now. So let's talk about bullet gravity here. Let's make that all the way on the top here. So let's get our first bullet gravity. So export. Now the bullet gravity will be in integer, but it will move this amount per frame. So let's start by creating a gravity. So we have a export int var bullet underscore gravity. And this will be uh, instead of the five. That should be too fast or too slow for our example here. Okay, so we have a gravity now. Let's create a directional force here. 
let's make it all the way underneath here. Let's call this directional force for our bullet. Variable, directional force, equals to a vector 2. Now this will be calculated, it will not be inserted right here. This will be calculated each time we change the gravity or our angle. No, excuse me. This will be calculated whenever we change our direction of the bullet and the speed of our bullet. And those are variables we're going to create as well. So, let's start by creating a speed, bullet speed here. Export, integer, variable, bullet, underscore speed. And let's set it to be eh, 8. Okay, so we need our angle of our bullet as well. Actually, let's put that on the top here so the integers are stuck together. So this will be a bullet angle, will be export, and this will be a float value. Variable bullet underscore angle equals to... Let's take a look at what angle should we pick. Well, zero from this direction, zero angle, and you're using degrees by the way, not radian. Zero will be towards the right. So if I were to go 90, it would be to the bottom here. 180 will be directly behind you, and 720 will all the way up. So I figure about uh, 350? Yeah, 350. That will be 10 degrees upwards. So let's enter 350. But I will never want our angle to be lower than 0 or higher than 360. So the way I'm going to solve this is by creating a setGet function behind there. So I will name this setBulletAngle. What this will do is, before this is assigned anywhere, we're gonna run it through this method. So if I were to go down here, let's create a bob right here. Funk set bullet angle, and this will take in a value, which is the value of where we, that's the value it's been assigned to. And we will then use a bullet underscore angle equals to a clamp. And I love clamp. Just recently someone reminded me about it. I had completely forgotten that clamp existed. And before that I used an if and then checked ranges. I used clamp is so much easier. So, what clamp does is, it takes first in the value that you want to clamp, then it takes in the float, float <laughs> minimum and the float max value. So basically, if it's lower than minimum, it will stick to minimum. If it's higher than max, it will stick to max. So the minimum value will be 0, and the max will be 359. Now the reason I'm not writing 360, because there are 360 degrees, is because 360 is the same as 0. So if we were to jump from 359 and one step up, you, we would go back to 0, right? So, let's take to 0 and 359. There we go. Okay, so we now have that done. What else do we need here? We have an angle now, we have a speed, but we have not assigned a directional force yet. And this is, like, probably the most important part here of our video. At least this video. There will be more. <laughs> Don't fear. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a function here. I'm going down here. Let's create a function called... Um, Update directional force. Yeah, update directional force, that's good. Enough. So what this will do is, it will assign this variable. And the way we are going to do that, we're going to use the bullet angle and bullet speed to create a normalized vector. Or rather, we're going to use the bullet angle to create a normalized vector, and the speed to create the force vector. If you don't know what a vector is, imagine it as an arrow. The longer the arrow is, the further it will go. The shorter the arrow is, the, the, the shorter it will go. So, let's go back here. Directional force. The way we're going to calculate this, the way we will calculate this is by creating a vector 2, which is what this will be. Now, the formula for create, for getting our normalized vector is cosinus in our x and sinus in our y uh, axis here. So, because this expects a radian, we will have to convert our angle, which is in degrees, to a radian. And that is done by simply multiplying it, call it L, by pi divided by 180. So we only have to copy this and paste it in sin. And now we have a normalized vector of the angle. So that means if our angle is directly up, our normalized vector will be x is 0 and y is minus 1. What else do we need here? Well, we have the direction, we don't have the force yet. So let's add a force to it by multiplying this with our bullet speed. So if you imagine a one inch or one centimeter arrow in length, then you multiply that one with the speed. So that will make the arrow longer and that will make it go further. So we have our updated directional force yet, but we're not running it anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this inside ready. So on the beginning of each time we start our game, it's gonna calculate our directional force. So we have this 
before we start shooting. Cool, so what else do we need? Well, we still have no way of shooting. I mean, we have the math involved in shooting, we have the direction, we have the gravity the bullet is going to be affected with. But we don't have any way of shooting it, so... Inside ready, we're gonna create a process input. Set underscore process input to true. And while we're at it, let's enable processing. Now, what we are gonna do is, we are going to use the process to do the shooting and the process input to know when when we are pressing the button. So let's start by creating a func underscore input event. And we're gonna use the event to check for if event dot is action pressed. And the action we're gonna check for is UI underscore select. And this will be the space bar. If you don't want if you want to check other actions, you can go into scene, project settings, and input map. Here we have a list of all the actions you can do. So we have UI select here, which is triggered whenever you press this space button. So let's go back here. So if you're holding down, if you're pressing rather, UI select, we want to enable shooting. So I'm gonna create a new variable called shooting. Set it to true. However, I will also know when we release the button, otherwise it will be kinda useless. So if, else if event action released, spacebar, we're gonna set it to false. Now, the reason I'm doing this, instead of using, for example, input, and if I were to hold down the button, it would just rapid fire, is because there is a slight delay between the first time this runs and when it keeps looping. If I use an event, is action press, this runs only once, even if you hold it down, and it will enable shooting, which will be triggered in the processing. So let's start by creating our processing. So func process delta. So if we are shooting, actually, let me not forget to create this variable here. So I'm just gonna go up here, create it uh, right there. Shooting. The variable sh shooting is default by default. Okay, let's go back down here. So if we are shooting, we want to, well, let's uh, let's use let's create another method here. Let's call it fire. Now. Actually, let's name this fire once, because this will only fire once. If I were to just enter shoot here, this will just fire rapidly, without any delay. But we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make that. Just, just hold your horses here. <laughs> so, if we are shooting, we want to fire once. Let me create the script here. About shoot. Funk fire once is shoot. But after triggering shoot, we're gonna set shooting to false, and that's all there is to this. <laughs> so. Using fire once, we will shoot once and disable shooting. So this will only shoot once while we're holding down the button. If you release it, it turns to false, and then you can press it again. So if you theoretically had an auto-clicker, you can actually shoot infinitely fast. Well, okay, maybe not infinitely fast, but pretty damn fast. And you probably don't want that. So what we are going to do, we are going to create a delay. So you cannot shoot until that delay has exceeded a certain amount of wait time. So let's go all the way up here. Let's create one above the bullet scene and below gravity. Let's create an export, and the delay will be a float value. Variable is called it bullet underscore delay. Equal, let's point, use 0.5 seconds here, that's half a second. Now underneath there, we're gonna create a variable weighted, and set it to 0 by default. This will change each time we're waiting. This can be changed from outside, so if you want to decrease it to have a, to be able to fire faster, we can do that, or increase it if you want a slower speed of shooting. So, I'm gonna just keep it 0.5. So actually, I'm gonna change this one second so it's a more visible change here. I'm gonna copy weighted. I'm gonna go all the way down. And inside process here. So, if we're shooting and we have waited longer than our bullet delay. So, if you're shooting, if you're holding down the shoot button and we have waited longer than bullet delay. So, if weighted is longer or rather larger than bullet delay, we can do this. So, how do we, how does that work? Well, if we're not shooting, if we're not, if this is false, but for any reason, we want to increment our weighted plus equal delta. Delta is the time between each time this runs. So this is basically real time. So this starts at zero and increment with delta. So after one second, there will be have a value of one and so on. So if this is greater than our one, we can shoot. This is true and we shoot. So when we shoot, we have to make sure to turn off the weighted, meaning we have to Reset it to zero, so it's less than our weighted bullet delay. And that means we can, this will not work until this has done enough work to get above our wait time, our bullet delay. But this this is not optimal, because if we're not shooting, we just imagine going AFK in your game, just leaving. 
it's gonna run infinitely. It's just gonna keep adding, adding. It's gonna be so huge. It's gonna do so much unnecessary work. How do we how do we prevent that? Well, let's change it to an elif. Elif, if our waited time is less or equal to our bullet delay, it's the opposite of this. So if we have shot and the waited time is less than our bullet time or equal, we'll increment. And the reason we're incrementing this while it's equal is because this needs to be bigger than this. And as long as equal or less, this will never be bigger than this. So this will not trigger unless we have this equals on here. Or, it, I mean, you may get lucky. Or you may get unlucky. <laughs> if you get the exact value on the weighted as both delay, neither this or this will run. So let's just, let's just, pre <laughs> let's add an equal sign there, okay? So now this will just stop running after we have reached the amount of wait time. So this will do nothing. Until we shoot and reset this and this keeps going all the way up again. Now this won't really do anything yet because we don't have a function called shoot in our bullet yet. But I believe our cannon is done for now. So, with that being said, let's go into a cannonball here. Let's click a cannonball, let's right click and create an add script. And this will be inside cannonball, cannonball gd. Perfect. Let's create it. Okay, so what's, what's special about our cannonball? Well, we know we want some sort of gravity on this cannonball. So let's create a there, gravity. Now the reason I'm using underscore is just to differentiate it, as this is basically a private variable. There are several ways of doing this, this is just how I try to do it. I <laughs> I forget this a lot, but yeah, just something to keep in mind. This is basically a private variable here. Even though there aren't really any private variables in Godot, at least to my understanding. So we have a gravity and we have a movement. Actually, let's put this here by default. Now these are going to change each time we shoot. So we have a funk called shoot, which we have run from our cannon. And that, as you may remember, takes in a directional force and our gravity, which we will use to determine how fast the ball will drop. So let's add movement equal to directional force. This may be a... Mm, yeah, it's a good name. It's fine. Gravity equal to gravity. And lastly, we have to enable processing. So set fixed process true. Now the reason, and this is important, the reason we're using fixed process is because using a fixed process, no, we can predetermine the number of frames it's going to run per second. So a fixed process is 60 ticks per second, or 60 frames. And this allows us to calculate physics later on when we start adding our tool script. So we have now have our shoot here. Whenever we shoot, we assign a movement, gravity, and we start enabling our fixed process, which will be funk underscore fixed process delta. And this is the easy part here. So all we have to do now is simulate gravity. And that is done by adding movement y plus equals delta times gravity. Now delta, it means gravity will increase over time, basically. So, now we need to move. So all we have to do is move, and then insert our movement. And I believe that's it for this video. Let's make sure it works first before I start running things up here. Have I instanced it? Yes, I have. Let's try hitting the play button. Oh, did I assign boot path? I don't think I did. Let's let our cannon here. Let's, oh, I did set it. Huh. I'll probably have to refresh. Yeah, one thing to mention, if you have instance a scene and it doesn't work, cannot convert argument one from nil to notepad. That's because, let's take a look at a scene instance here. We don't have a bullet path here. We have to press this little sign here to update all the variables here to the default. Or we can just delete this and re-add the instance of our cannon here. It's a bit silly and it seems that it's a bit random, but uh, yeah, there's something to keep in mind. If it doesn't work, make sure your cannon scene, which you have instance, is equal to your cannon here, that you have updated all the variable in your scene. Let's hit play again, hope it works. Haha! -ha! Let's shoot! Woo! Yeah! And if I were to press, I'm pressing quickly now, there's always exactly one second delay now. So even if I were wait, and not press anything, as long as it's waited or one second will fire, which is perfect! So, even if you wanted to manually shoot and have some sort of rapid fireness, you can control the time. So, let's do one last thing. One last thing. Let's create a rapid fire function here. So funk rapid fire and shoot. And we're done. <laughs> so I'm gonna replace fire once with rapid fire. Let's see what happens when I hold down the button. Now. And it works! It's alive! <laughs> so that's how you create a cannon that can shoot a ball. One last thing. Now, it's important to know. That when you are spawning a object instead of another object with a collision box, and they both have a collision box, 
It means it will be a glitch. Let me start by spawning in the middle of this one. Let's take a look and see what happens here. It's just gonna glitch all over here. So the way we can make sure these two collision boxes don't interact with each other is by let's select our cannon here. Let me change the layer of our cannon. Let's use two. Let me do the same with a cannonball. Let's select two. That's wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> That's the wrong inspector. No, there. There we go. Select cannonball. Let's go into layers and select two. Now, the way this works, and this is confusing, uh, even to me, even though I know how it works, it's still confusing to me, because it's a bit, um, it's difficult to get control over this, uh, over you, over what you're doing. But, imagine mask is being what this object will collide with. This object is in layer 2, and will collide with other objects that is in mask 1. Now, you can add more, and it will still collide with objects in mask 1. These are not unique, so if you have only 2, you don't have to match one with exactly 2 in mask, or rather layer as well. Just something to keep in mind. Now what this will do is, I will not collide with myself now as a cannonball, because our layer is different than the mask, so even if I were to stack cannonball on top of each other, they will not collide with each other. And you may want that, or you may not want. In the case of our tutorial, I will not do that. So our cannon will not collide with other cannons, and our cannon will not collide with other cannonballs. I'm sharing the same layer. Now there are many ways of doing this. If you want to collide with each other, you can do that. And I might do some more work on that a bit later on in our next video. So let's hit play here. Let's make sure it all works. Perfect. Now it spawns from inside the and there's no collision or nuisances. So before recording my next video, I will wait. I will give it a few days so you can comment. You can let me know if what you want to see next. You already seen what the end result will be like, ish. You know, give or take. I, may, I might make improvements if you have suggestions you want to make or general feedback. Feel free to come below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, so you can see the next videos I will make for us, and I will, uh, I will, uh, see, I will, I will, <coughs> I will see you next video. Bye bye. -bye.